Good morning. How are you? I hope you're having a great Monday. Welcome to Monday. It's Monday again. It seems like it was just Monday seven days ago. It was, right? <laughs> anyway, it just keeps coming around, doesn't it? We get one every seven days. Wow, that's more than 10%. That's not even cool, huh? Anyway, so Mondays don't really mean much to me, except I got clients that will probably start contacting me here in a little bit, saying, where's this? Where's that? Where's that? Hey, I did get some stuff done this weekend, but I had some fun this weekend, too. I got to go on a nice hike uh, down in the wilderness area, and uh, uh, it was really good. I felt good, and the hike was good, and it was just... It was wonderful. <clears throat> I came home to bad news that a uh, fellow hiker had been lost on that the same, pretty close to the same trail. Not they, they didn't stay on the trail. That was one thing, and I always stay on the trail. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, so that that's uh, you know, it, I think that that's the thing is there's so many ups and downs, even in a day. Now, I, not to brag or anything, but I can go from Woohoo, way up here. I'm so excited. This is wonderful to, oh my gosh, we're all going to die in just a matter of three seconds. Seriously, it might not even take that long some days, right? My emotions can be way high, way good, and then they can just bottom out. And uh, it doesn't take much. Maybe a picture of Chris before the wreck. Maybe the bad news like I received yesterday. Or or maybe, you know, you never know. It, it can be, and, but don't, isn't that what makes our life interesting to to some degree is you never know what to expect and you know I hiked in what's called a wilderness area and it says you've got to know your directions you've got to carry water you know you've got <clears throat> there's no you know, you know take a flashlight in case you get lost uh, you know all these different things and because you never know what to expect it's a wild area it's a it's a untamed area and life is like that you never know what to expect you know a day can bring lots of really good news a day can bring lots of really bad news but most days have a little bit of both right there's some good stuff going on, some bad stuff going on, some in-between stuff going on. And we it's up to us to figure out how to rely on God with no matter what is going on. You know, Job got a lot of bad news all at once. I mean, I can't even imagine all of his children dying in one huge catastrophe. All of his crops are gone, all of his animals, his wealth, everything was gone except his wife. Everything was gone in a day. But he had three friends. And I've been meditating on this. And after they open their mouths, we, we have to discredit them, right? <laughs> but before they open their mouths, they came and they sat with Job for seven days. And they said that his grief was so great, they sat silently. And when they started opening their mouths and they were condemning him and telling him he didn't, he, all the things they, he must have done wrong for these things to happen. And Job just kept maintaining his integrity before God, right? He's like, no, I'm good with God. God and I, we got it. We're good. You know, so that's not it. That's not it. And it, it, But for that seven days, before they started opening their mouth, and they were overcome with the grief, sharing the grief of their friend, you know, they sat there silently. God give us more friends like that. They just sit there and just go, I'm just here. I can't, I can't make anything better. I can't fix anything. But I'm here. I'm just here. And sometimes God's that way. We don't hear him necessarily. Uh, <clears throat> I, read, I read two devotions every morning. One is Oswald Chambers' um, Utmost for His Highest. And the other one I found in my books, when I was going through my books not long ago, is by Max Lucado. And he said, sometimes when God is silent, it's because we're listening to in the wrong, for the wrong place or in the wrong place. And so, uh, you know, his, Job's friends were silent, but Job was looking for answers. And when they started talking, they didn't even have the right answers. But at the end of the book, at the end of all these, I think it's about 32 chapters or so, 31 chapters maybe, Job said, or God said, when when it, it says Job prayed for his friends and his healing came, right? Everything started lining up. So I want to encourage everyone. What did I title this today? Oh, I know God is faithful, right? He remains faithful. I want to encourage everyone today to pray for your friends. Um, make a list. I've got I've got a long list. I, I need to write it down. I've got it in my mind right now, but I need to write it down. I've got several concerns that are on my heart for my loved ones be it friends or family a lot of my friends are family <laughs> to me you know 
I just want to encourage everyone to look outside your box today. See, I can get I can get so self-absorbed into what's going on in my life, right? That's easy because I'm here by myself pretty much 24/7. Uh, you know, and and uh, I, it can be so burdensome if that's the right word that I get so focused on this that I forget that other people are going through things too everybody's going through something maybe it's a physical circumstances that you're trying to to get better feel better right maybe you don't feel well maybe your your marriage is is on the rocks and, and you're praying that it holds together and you're giving it everything or you're not giving it anything at all I don't know you know may, maybe your finances who knows and the, uh, all of us are dealing with in, inflation I, I got a bill this morning that just for went up 10 bucks it's a, it's a monthly bill that's a christmas cbd and it just went up 10 bucks and they didn't even warn me i was like wait this is not normally this much because i know exactly how much i got it written in my book you know and i went looking and yeah i went up 10 bucks without them even warning me so everything's going up so we all have all these different things so i encourage you today whether you do it mentally or actually on paper make a list of just start with three three friends you know are going through something and today just look outward and pray for them today because usually when we end up praying for someone else, God answers us behind the scenes. He's probably going to answer us behind the scenes anyway. And so that brings me to, to what I was reading this morning. I just As I was praying for my hiker friends that uh, the, ki the kid actually passed, and I was praying for the family, and I can't even imagine coming home from a hike without somebody. I just can't. I can't imagine that. And, and so I was I was praying for them this morning. I was praying for others, and, and uh, I just kept thinking, He remains faithful. God remains faithful. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through, good, bad, indifferent, <laughs> whatever our day looks like, whatever it doesn't look like, God remains faithful. He is here. For Job, God was still faithful. God still answered him. In the end, God healed him and restored his wealth and, and gave him new children. Now, he didn't get his old children back, so he still had that loss, but he, but he got a new life in the midst of everything, right? So God was faithful to Job. God was faithful to David, even when David messed up. So even if we mess up, God's still going to be faithful. Even if our confession, you know, so many focus on our faith confession, even if our confession is wrong, God's still faithful. Even if we don't confess anything at all, God's still faithful. Whether we're saved or we're not saved, we trust him, we don't trust him, we're mad at him, we're not, we're happy with him, we're talking to him or not, God remains faithful. And that's something you can take to the bank. And so I looked I looked up the phrase in a, in a concordance because I was like, okay, I know that God remains faithful. And so I found it in 2 Timothy 2.13. It says, if we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. But I looked it up on my Bible Gateway online, and it gave me the different translations. And the Living Bible came up. Now, I don't typically use the Living Bible. The Living Bible is just a paraphrase. The New Living Translation is a kind of a combination. They kept some of the part of the paraphrase, but they went back to the original Hebrew and Greek and translated it with that flair, I guess is the right word. And so this is a paraphrase and I don't usually like paraphrases, but this I, this this hit me where I needed it today. And that's what I love about God's Word. It's alive. It never changes. It, it Because it's alive, when we put it in our heart, it puts His life in our heart, right? Anyway, so so when I looked up, He remains faithful. In 2 Timothy 2.13, in the, new, in the Living Bible, which is just a paraphrase, it says, Even when we are too weak to have any faith left, He remains faithful to us and will help us for he cannot disown us who are part of himself and he will always carry out his promises to us as i was reading i just i, I sat and i just read that two or three times i was like even when we're too weak to have faith, have you ever felt that way oh now i know all you faithers are gonna go oh no no i always have faith there's always faith no but i know i've walked through some stuff in my life where I've been too weak to even feel like I had any faith left. Now, that didn't mean I didn't have any faith left, because even in the darkest hours of the, those midnight hours of the soul, the dark night of the soul, Oswald Chambers says, even in the dark night of the soul, even in those moments when you feel abandoned, even in those moments where you feel overwhelmed, those moments where you think you can't take another step, 
even in those moments, you feel like there's no faith there. But something inside of you starts going, God, I, I don't have any words, but God, I, there's something inside that still reaches out to him. And he is faithful to meet you right there. Isn't that an amazing God? You know, one time I was I was in Chris's room. It was actually in the apartment in Norman, second apartment we lived there in Norman. And I remember just being overwhelmed. He was probably sick because, you know, <laughs> that, that, y'all, if y'all follow, y'all know. And uh, I remember just going, I can't take anything else, God. That's it. I can't take anything else. And just as plain as day, it was like he said, or what? And I mean, I just came out of that grief and that frustration and the, the tension of that moment and went, or I'm just going to trust you anyway. I mean, there wasn't an or what. There, I, I just can't take anything else. I, I can't take one more thing, but I'm still just going to trust you. So no matter what you're facing today, lots of stuff, not much stuff, big stuff, little stuff, in between stuff, no matter what you're facing, remind yourself, he's still faithful and you're still going to trust him. Be frustrated. It's okay. Tell him how you feel. Isn't that, isn't that what, I mean, look, just look at the favorite, I've been in this one several times over the last couple of weeks in Psalm 13 as I've been praying. Let me get over here to it because I didn't plan on reading it. Uh, listen to David. <coughs> oh, I had peppers on my hand. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? David had to have been frustrated. He was seeking God for answers. And, he, and sometimes we seek him for answers and they don't look like they're coming. But Daniel prayed for 21 days. The answer had already come. He just didn't get it yet. God is going to answer us. It may not look like we thought. It may not be the answer we wanted. That's some, usually the case. But it's okay to tell God how you feel. David says, how long will you forget me, God? Forever? Hear the frustration behind that. He was a human, and he, he, he knew in his heart that God was with him, but his eyes and his situation and his circumstances was telling him that God had forsaken. Have you ever been there? How long will you look the other way? He's like, God, are you even looking at me? Hello, do you see this? <laughs> right? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me. Oh, Lord, my God, restore light to my eyes. I'm going to die, will die. Right? But then he says, but I will trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he has been so good to me. And so in that moment, he, he in all of that frustration, I can't take anything else. But I still can't give up. Why? Because God remains faithful. Period. Even when we're not. Even when we are saying, I know, you're looking the other way. I've said it. You're looking the other way. You don't even see. You don't even see what's going on. You just don't. Or, you, or what's worse, you see what's going on and you don't even care. I've said that to him. But when I get through praying, when I get through pouring all that frustration out, I always come back to this. Well, I'm just going to trust you anyway because I don't have a better option, <laughs> right? So I'm just going to trust in his unfailing love. I'm just going to trust in what he says here in his word. I'm going to trust that he is my shepherd. I'm going to trust that he is that open door out of the valley of, of pain. He provides a, a door of hope. In the valley of pain in out of Hosea, I think it's about about verse fourteen, that he's still that door of hope in the midst of crazy circumstances, and he's not going to close that door, and he's not going to take it away. He remains faithful. It says when we're too weak to have any faith left, he remains faithful. He will help us. He will not disown us. He will always carry out his promises to us. The, the Living Bible says that. I love it. Remind yourself today, he's faithful. Pick three friends to pray for today. And then just throughout the day, just pray for them. You can pray randomly. <laughs> Everybody needs help right now. Everybody needs peace. Everybody needs comfort. Everybody needs hope. Everybody needs help with finances. Everybody needs, there's always stuff you can pray for people. Maybe it's people you know, there are specific situations that are that, that they're concerned about. And you can pray specifically for them to have peace and direction and, and for God to intervene, right? Choose three friends today to pray for. 
Because when you pray for peace for someone else, guess what you're going to get? You're going to get peace. Peace out, guys. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.